Watson and Crick are two names of legendary scientific status. Theirs was the discovery of the double helix of DNA, what they called the secret of life. But was that discovery somehow scooped from others? That's a point of contention and controversy that I asked Steve Meyer about. So I asked him to show me around Cambridge, England on his recent visit here, and he shared with me some of the history surrounding this famous discovery. Chaos Theory. Theory. The famous Eagle Pug here in Cambridge. On February 28, 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick walked a few hundred yards from Free School Lane, where we'll be in just a minute, to announce to the people in the pub that they had discovered the secret of life. And uh, less than two months later, on April 25th of 1953, they published the famous paper on the structure of deoxyribonucleic acid, the structure of DNA. They were able to elucidate it. Now, until recently, uh, 2017, maybe seven or eight years ago now, um, this plaque had no mention of Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. But there's, there's a, been a longstanding controversy about the role that they played in the, in the DNA discovery because Watson and Crick themselves did no uh, experimental work on, on the DNA. Rather, they were modeling and synthesizers of other people's data. And uh, Maurice Wilkins and Franklin, Rosalind Franklin, had a lab at the University of London in which they were doing X-ray crystallographies. And one of the things that uh, they discovered, Franklin in particular, was that if you shine X-rays through a crystal of DNA, it will form on the other side on the detection plate a characteristic pattern called a Maltese cross, a pattern that's characteristic of a helix. And uh, Watson went down to the, the lab in London and spent some time with Franklin proposing the idea that there might be a helix, a helical structure. Franklin and, and Wilkins weren't quite prepared to say that yet, but he got in quite a heated argument with Franklin and she apparently nearly threw him out of her office. And Watson later said that he, he feared for his own safety because uh, she was so angry with him. He was 23 years old, very brash, and he was uh, collecting data from other people. Uh, in that same period of time, they had, I think, fortunately for them, um, gotten a peek, a sneak peek at a paper that was going to be published by Linus Pauling, who was proposing a triple helix for the structure of DNA. And the paper was shared with him by Pauling's son, who was here as a, as a postdoc. And uh, so between the information they got from Pauling, that it was a triple helix, and the information they got from Franklin, uh, that it was likely a helix, the other part of the story I didn't tell, on the way out, on the, the day that he that Watson has this angry encounter with with Rosalind, um, he stops in Maurice Wilkins's office, and Wilkins ends up giving him a pre-published version of the paper that he that Franklin was working on. And sure enough, she suspected that it was a helix as well, but she wasn't ready to say so to Watson. And she uh, and anyway, so he left, came back on the train, and they now from two sources suspected it was a helix, but based on some of the biochemical modeling they'd done of the constituent parts of the DNA and some of the spacing issues that were known, they knew it couldn't be a triple helix. It would be too densely compacted in the center of the molecule to be consistent with other data they had. So they had proposed instead a double helix where the, 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 helis, the, the strands of the helix were twisting and leaving space in between, which they later proposed would be filled by the nucleotide bases forming a complementary bonds and a ladder. And uh, I'll show you in a minute the place where they did this modeling and how they were effectively able to uh, snap all the pieces together and come up with a model that explained all the different pieces of data, not only from the X-ray crystallography, but also from biochemistry and what was known about the, um, the constituent parts of the DNA molecule, the subunits. Uh, one final little bit of story here, though, is that when uh, I was a PhD student, Maurice Wilkins came and spoke to our department about the whole controversy. I had a chance to talk to him afterwards, a couple other students, and I asked him, well, how close were you guys? Did you and Rosalind have, might you have made the discovery yourself? And he said, we were really nowhere. We were just doing the, the X-ray crystallography studies. Watson and Crick were really unique in their, in their modeling and synthesizing the data. And of course, both of those functions are really crucial to science. 
generating the data, doing those frontline studies, and also making sense of it. And so really all four of these great scientists should be honored, but it, it isn't the case that Watson and Crick were bad guys because they stole the data. Maybe the, some of their methods were a little, a little sketch, but um, what they did essentially was something that's very important in science, which is pulling the pieces together and making sense of all the data with a coherent model. Theos Theory.